Hey y'all, Joe here, Southern Coast of Cooking, coming at you tonight with some great cooking. I tell y'all what, really excited because I don't know if y'all saw my Facebook page, my unboxing that Mad Door Prime uh, Porterhouse I got the other night. Well, I've got it ready to cook. I'm going to show y'all that steak, that porterhouse, that two pound porterhouse, y'all. Enough to feed two people. Also, i got another little surprise here on the side that I'm going to pair with it. I'm going to show y'all what's going on. I'll come on down here. First off, i <clears throat> got that wonderful steak. Now, this is the Mandor Prime. Look at this beef. It's USDA Prime. Look at the marbling in there. Why don't you compare this to this little steak I got from the grocery store. So I'm doing for something different, but look at that. I mean, that's that's the <clears throat> base of the prime that came from Kroger. I can't believe it. Uh, but look at this prime here. Now, we'll talk about the porterhouse. First off, this is about a two pound steak, but 32 ounces. Uh, <clears throat> big enough to feed two people, but you know what? Like a filet right here. This is this sitting right over on this side. So you've got your filet. Then also you've got your New York strip over here. So you've really got two steaks in one. A lot of times my wife and I order one, I'll eat the strip side and she'll eat the filet. But to be a porterhouse and not a T-bone, it's got to have at least two inches of filet over here. So that's something, you know, I'll maybe show a picture of my grocery store at the end of the uh, video, how they have some scrawny on porterhouses. But this thing, look at that, you can see the T-bone right through there, which is, like I said, the difference here. Look at all this filet you're getting that you wouldn't get if it was a T-bone, they'd cut it off right through there or something like that. they take all this, be able to make a whole nother steak out of it. Wonderful marble in there, okay? And also what we're gonna pair it with tonight is some of those Louisiana crawfish tails that I got from Louisiana Crawfish Company. or with them tails of the week. I will make a wonderful topping for this. But meanwhile, let's go ahead and just get this dressed up like it needs to be. I've got some nice uh, olive oil here. And that's just basically, I'm gonna show you what I do. I don't do much of these steaks. I mean, you've seen me do this before, y'all. So, uh, yeah, just put a little bit of olive oil on, uh, on both sides. Once you got the olive oil on there, I'll pour some on this other little steak. Because I'm going to do it too. I'm doing it for something tomorrow off camera, but I'm just comparing it to something. Nothing to do with this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cook it tonight, though. <clears throat> but uh, look at that. You got your olive oil there. Now, seasoning wise. You don't have to do much. In fact, you go with nothing really except for a little bit of salt, pepper. But I love me this St. Elmo steak season. Man, that's, that's awesome. Plus that Indianapolis. And they get steak right. I'm telling you, they have an awesome shrimp cocktail sauce too. But we're going to go with that. A little St. Elmo's on this bad boy. Okay. Just there, just to give it to the kiss of flavor. And then also my Sure Shot Sids. Ultimate just beef flavoring right there. Just brings out the flavor in any piece of beef. All right, so a little sure shot on there. Oh man, I'm just smell it right now. Then we'll flip it over. We'll do the same with the little filet I got over here. But again, uh, we're gonna get this steak good. Now I got these seasoned up. I want to show y'all something else. I want y'all to look for. Um, a lot of times <clears throat> when you big grocery stores and stuff like that to their red meat. They will actually add in the process of plant like a red dye to make them look that real, real bright, bright red like that. You know, this is a much more natural red color on this steak. I'm telling you, these Maddor Primes are just something else. But we'll let this sit here just a little bit while we go out and we get the Yoda ready, get everything rolling, all right? All right, y'all, we're out here at the Yoda Y640. <clears throat> and I'm going to show you what we got here. I got loaded down with these new lumberjack pellets I've been using, this char hickory, okay, because I want an even hot fire, okay, and these char hickory pellets burn a little bit hotter, because they got a little charcoal in there, they got hickory, supposed to put out some good BTUs, so uh, let me show you what they look like, if you haven't seen my last video, they're, uh, they're black looking pellets, so it be really, really good for this, so that's what we're using. We're rolling this about 300 something degrees right now because we're going to do a reverse sear. Big steak like this, you need to do a reverse sear, y'all, I'm telling you. So let me bring you around over here. All right. You see, I've got the steaks right down there. Show you my setup in the pit. Real. 
I've got set up for some reverse serum. We have our grill grates over there. The serum got my heat plate pushed all the way over. I'm gonna set them over here right now to cut the chill off of them. Then we'll start going right there, just like that. Okay? You hear that big old state thump right down there? I'm telling you what, that's where it's at. So, Mad Door Prime going in right there, my friends. We're going to shut this down. We'll get it going. All right, y'all. Now we're going to start to prepare this crawfish cream sauce. All right, I got a little dab of butter here. By that state's one out there. It's on the lower heat side. And we'll turn this on. Melt this little piece of butter here. And then we're going with some shallots, okay? All right, y'all. So now we got my pan going here with a little butter melted. Apologize for the microwave going in the background. I had to start the potato. Got some shallots. But two nice size shallots minced up. We're going to just saute that down. All right, it's our first step. <clears throat> now that those shallots start to wilt down, or saute up a little bit in mushrooms. Got some baby bellies, y'all. Slice baby bellies, yeah. Hard to beat that. Look at this now. Today I'm going to add a little bit of chicken stock. Alright, just pick everything up off the bottom. A little bit, something like that. There we go. Just a little bit. And we'll let that keep on just uh just simmering. Alright y'all. So the water's starting to cook out of mushrooms. That's what we all wanted to see. And everything else. Let's start going from some seasoning. First off, Bezels. You know my favorite Cajun seasoning right there. Just a nice little dose of Bezels. I'm gonna go in early with something like that. Now I've got some fresh thyme, okay, it's probably about, a, I don't know, maybe, maybe about a teaspoon or two, fresh thyme. Oh, also, you know, fresh thyme is really, really good, but I mixed in a little bit of this. This dry French seasoning right here, this stuff is really, really good, okay. Uh, cracked black pepper, freshly cracked black. Let's go on with some of that right now. We'll go on with some more of that later. But uh, yeah, you can't really can't beat that. You want that up in here. And it's just that we just want these herbs and everything just kind of cook around. Get that good flavor in here for the sauce. Mm -mm -mm. Man, that steak is, is looking good. I went and checked on it just a second ago. We're about to go flip it, y'all, here. In a few, but that's why I got it way over there on the other side so we can kind of go low. And we'll do the reverse sear here in just a bit. And you know what? Let's kick it up a notch. Have a little bit of brandy to this party. Okay? A little bit of brandy. Oh, yeah. There we go. Let that kind of cook in there. With everything. And the marinade just is, uh, this is, oh man, with those vegetables and all that goodness. That's going to be good. We'll get a hint of that later, you know, because it evaporates. Let's see if it'll flambe at all. Oh yeah, look, a little flambe right there. Look at that. Oh yeah, there's something for the camera. Yeah, we've got so much other liquids in there. we got a little bit of action. But, uh, again... Let this just sit here and simmer, reduce this liquid down, okay? That's what we want to do right now. All right, Charles, got to here and check on these steaks. These steak. Oh, yeah, look at that one. That was what I'm talking about. That porterhouse is looking good back there. Just getting a little bit of smoke on him. Down, flip that one. Flip that bad boy right there. Look at that. Just slow, slow. What we're going for right now while we build that sauce inside, y'all. Alright, y'all, we're cooking more and more of this water off here. That's what I'm talking about, just like that. Looking good. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> A little bit more of this crap black pepper in there. Let's see, we're going to need this season here in a bit. Maybe a little bit more of these else. It's a little bit hotter version right here. Test product. How about that, y'all? Okay. <clears throat> Get everything going. And I'm going to come in.
with the cream in just a minute. Actually, shoot now, we're going to come in with a little bit more butter. Let me show you all. I'm over here cutting it in just a second. A lot of butter. we got to get the crawfish in the party. Right? Because uh, that's the main idea. And look, these good Louisiana crawfish, Louisiana Crawfish Company, I want them to fat and all their goodness in there. So I'm talking about turn up to about medium heat. Let those saute right in there, y'all. Go to them too. I'm gonna add some of this Korean style hot and sweet sauce. Really, really good stuff. I love adding it to my sauces like this because not only does it bring out flavor, it has a wonderful color to it. So uh, we're gonna stir that in there. Probably gonna run get a little bit of cayenne pepper. Because I'm going to bring heat up in this sauce so I like mine to have a little bite to it. I don't know about y'all. Each to your own, but uh, this is some older kind of pepper I've had in the freezer. So I ain't got enough, might not want to put quite that much in yours. But mine's kind of lost its bite somewhat. So uh, mix all that in there. Now with that being done, now it's up to Pretty good simmer, got it on a higher heat. We want to add some heavy cream. Okay, the main thing with the cream sauce. I guess I add about eight ounces. About a cup, we're gonna stir this in here. Alright. That's what is making this into a cream sauce. We're gonna turn the heat back down here in just a second. We're just gonna let this simmer and let that let it turn up back down low or lower. And let your simmer just reduce, y'all. Because that's what we're talking about right there for that, that cream sauce. So we go to the top of that steak and everything else. You just gotta let that reduce, reduce, reduce. Check our steak out here one more time. Looking good. A little bit more to the touch right there. Like I said, we're just getting that flavor adapting everything. Just flipping right there. Alright, y'all. Now we're going to take this sauce and we'll set it aside. And we're going to work. We're going to thicken this bad boy up. Okay? I got a little butter right here. I got more on low heat. Alright, let me find me a spatula. Oh yeah, just like we want. I got me some flour. Okay, basically what we're going to do is we're going to do a quick roux. Okay? A tablespoons of flour. And it's going to be a pretty much a blonde roux. A white roux because I don't want... I want to have as much sticking and power as possible. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to stir around this little bit of flour in this non-stick pan. Perfect for this. And we're going to we'll just cook it, basically. Cook the flour taste out of it. And that's going to help us thicken our sauce just a little bit, okay? Because uh, I want to cook those crawfish tails away in the sauce. Really, just kind of play with this here. Mm -hmm. So, just kind of brown out this flour. What we're going to do not too much, just a little bit, just to cook the floury taste out of it. In just a moment. Now, I'm going to do I'm going to start putting some of the liquid to the sauce in here in just a minute. Let me show you how I mean. Let's see here. Some of the cream and everything else. Watch this, because this flour. Put up some, okay? Some of the sauce in there, just like that. Okay? And just keep going the liquid, just like that. What that's doing is going ahead and it's going to make a thick syrup, but you know what I mean. We're going to stir that in there, just like that. And we'll get a good paste. Paste just, uh, yeah, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. We'll put this back in the sauce to thicken everything up. All right, in just a moment. But I've got to get a lot of this. I'm trying to get the real liquid, liquid stuff out of there. All right. So that's that. Okay. Now, stir that in there just like that. 
Now I'm going to bring the sauce back over. So that you see that there? Now we'll put all this thickening power back in the sauce. Okay, I don't have my heat on right now. I want to mix this in the sauce first. Okay, all that cream, everything in there. I'm going to mix that thickener in there. Okay, actually, I'm going to have the heat on. Let's turn it off. So right now, let's mix all this goodness back in here. Oh, yeah, see, it's sticking this sauce up nicely now. But that's how you get your sauce thickened a quicker in a pinch. Because I don't want to sit around here and wait and wait for all that reducing. In fact, let's see here, where's my. Got a little bit more chicken stock somewhere. Put a little more chicken stock in there. It almost got too thick now. That was a good little bit of roux there. Okay. So let's just stir that around. We'll uh, add a little more stock if we need to. Just want to get to the right consistency. How you want it. Alright y'all, that's perfect. Just like we want. Again, the heat's off. Just, just see, see how it just drips like that. And we'll set this aside. Finish the steaks. And while the steaks are resting, We'll finish this sauce off, sauce off and it'll be beautiful. Alright y'all, let's check his steak. Oh yeah. Alright. It's had enough time on the low and slow over here. We're about to get ready to let it rock and roll over these real grates. Alright. So I want to zoom in here for y'all so you can see. I forgot to plenty of light over there on the grates. I might take the light over here on this side. Hold on. There you go. There we go. Y'all can surely see what's going on on the grill grates. Now, <clears throat> let me grab a porterhouse. Throw it over there. Let that baby just start to sear. Now that is where the real cooking's coming in right there. We're going low and slow. Trying to get it, you know, where it needs to be. Because we don't, we don't want to reason for the reserve sear is you want to cook it thoroughly like you want it mostly all the way through and then you just sear the crust of it okay so uh, that's what we're we'll gonna do we'll sear the crust you don't want a, a real gray edge on it like a thick edge so uh, let me put this down anyway for this put this in the glue over there got by her and we'll just go a minute or two on that side all right let's see about giving this flip First time. Oh yeah, there we go. Find a two. Put the tater. That's good right there. Let it go a few more minutes. Make sure we don't get past that mm, mid rare point. Let's get it on another one more flip. So it looks like over here. Oh yeah. Look at that. We gotta take the temperature right now. Got the uh, thermal works probe here. 123, One boom, it's ready to come off. Don't you cook another second, bad boy. That's right. Get this one off here. We go on the side and rest them. All right, y'all. Let's finish this sauce up right here. Put it back on the stove. Turn it on at a medium heat. All right, see how it is. Nice, it's kind of thickened up there, just sitting. That's what we want right there. Where the steaks are uh, just resting. Oh yeah. Now, look, one more little thing I want sauce. A little bit of green onion. Alright. Green onion is great in a sauce like this, but you can put it in at the last minute. Okay, just like that. Oh yeah. There we go. And, uh, Stir that right on in. We'll wait till this sucker just starts to kind of bubble a little bit, okay? It's gonna be so good. All right, now this sauce is coming to simmer. It's pretty much ready. Oh gosh, man, this is so good. And uh, I've tasted it for flavor. Excellent, excellent flavor to it. Okay, I'll we'll set it aside or over here on the back burner for a moment. We'll prepare this here for y'all. All right, y'all, look at this. First, we got the steak here. 
show you what I got this special knife it's cold steel it's this butcher style knife I have to put a link to this I want to use for just a steak which is kind of cut into them a little bit oh look at that tender in the shawl go right down the bone kind of like doing them fine steak houses look at that right there off the bone I'm just kind of cut them down just like this see what I'm saying Y'all follow me? That way, it'll be easy to serve up once it gets a sauce. Because again, usually two people or so are eating on this. I mean, this is a meal fit for a king right here, I'm telling you. Go ahead and cut those loose right there. Just keep on cutting down like that. That's the basically the uh, New York strip side. See how juicy? Wonderful that looks. Over here and just cut you a little slither of that filet. Look at that. Okay. So, uh, you might have to get a picture of all that. That's gorgeous. Before we lay some of that sauce on it, look at that. Just a little bit of fat to get off there for a second. But that's pretty right there. For sure. Just, uh, everything is nice. Show you what we're looking at. I think it is. Perfectly cooked, y'all. That's nice. All right, now I'm gonna come in with the uh, side. I'm gonna put this plate together for y'all. Potato. I have some Gouda cheese, some smoked Gouda actually. I put over there on the side. And let's get this sauce rolling. If I can get to my sauce I'm over here. Everything's all, all over the place. Hopefully y'all get a good view. Yeah. Look at that. Let's just roll that sauce right there on that. That bad boy. Look at that. Hey. Get some crawfish sauce on the potato. Why not, huh? Look at that. Is that not gorgeous? That's what I'm talking about. I got some bread here. Italian bread. Show y'all what I'm going to do with it. But over here on the side, I got some uh, some pesto, okay, some garlic, basil, stuff like that, a little pesto, olive oil, put it on the bread. And it's that beautiful. Well, I got a little couple of green onions for decoration right there on top. Oh yeah, that's a feast for sure. Glorious Maddor prime beef. All right, y'all, let's try this. Oh, my gosh. That's absolutely gorgeous. Let me just get a peek at the beef. I'm going to use a big knife here. I'm going to set some piece of bread down. This is just this bear. This is the Maddor Prime right here. Let's give this a try. Keep that sauce just a little bit. Mmm. Mm, mm, mm. Tenderness. Oh, come here. Second to none. Look, look. Pulling. Well, let's try and do it with the against the grain, everything. It's all just as tender as can be. Look at that. Now, I don't know what you're saying. I'll try the other side. See if it's tender. Let's try the other side. Go over here and pull out a piece. Oh yeah. Damn. Look at this. Sorry, I'm using my hands here, but I'm just trying to show y'all tenderness. Okay. Just right there, it still comes apart. That, and that's the that's the strip. That's not the filet. Mm. That is delicious. Mm, mm, mm. I'm gonna tell y'all something. This little Zena crawfish tail set off too. Oh my gosh, you're awesome. Mmm. I mean, this dish in a restaurant would probably be $250. Something like that. I mean, just ridiculous amount. Oh my goodness, just get the crawfish tails, everything right there in one bite. Mmm. 
Mm, mm, mm. Definitely one of the best steaks I've ever had, y'all. I'm going to eat a little bit more of this. I'm going to come back to you in a minute. Talk to you some more, but uh, I'm going to eat some while it's still hot.